Hey everybody, Ed Holmwood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. Today I'm going to do a review of the first generation Monitor Audio Silver 100 stand mount speakers. Now these have been out for, these are a few years old, and they're on loan to me from Kevin at Skylabs Vintage Audio in Des Moines, Iowa. Thank you so much, Kevin. And I know that they're one of his prized possessions, and after having listened to him extensively over the last several weeks, man, I understand why. So let's talk about him. This is, as I said, an older version. This model is still available in the Monitor Audio lineup, although I think now it's the Silver 107G. And looking at the specs on the manufacturer website, I didn't see a big difference. So maybe there's been some refinements, but I think sonically they should be very, very similar if you wanted to consider a new pair. And I think the street price on them is about 1500 bucks at Crutchfield. So manufacturer's frequency response on these is 40 hertz to 36,000. And believe me, I think in room, they do better than the 40 hertz. It's a very rewarding bass. They are 88 dB sensitive, so they're not a hard load to drive. They're 8 ohm, so that makes it easy. And the manufacturer recommends an amplifier power from 40 watts to 120 watts. I ran them on everything from the vintage gear, uh, almost everything was around 100 watts, up to 250 watts on the Orchard Audio Amp, and no problem at all. Um, they're a really unique speaker. It's an 8-inch stand mount and really well designed. And I think what's cool about these is the materials used. Now, cabinet is very solid, very well braced, beautiful finish. This is a matte white. I know they're available in a black and I think some wood grain as well. But what really makes it cool is this, the woofer material and the cone material used for the tweeter. Now, uh, Monitor Audio uses this proprietary material called CCAM, and it stands for ceramic coated aluminum magnesium. And I believe it is a sandwich material. And then they also, in a proprietary uh, pattern, put these dimples on the woofer, almost like a golf ball. Now, the CCAM material is very rigid, semi-metallic or metallic. So it's very, very rigid and the dimples help reduce or break up or eliminate resonances on the surface of the cone. That and the curve of the cone help eliminate those problems. And being a rigid material, it means the edge, there's very little edge breakup, but it's coupled with a inverted, uh, inverted butyl rubber surround. So again, that dampens the edge of the cone and they're super clean. Now, the ceramic material, the CCAM material is also very lightweight, which means the cone and the woofer can respond very, very quickly. The motor structure on this is very impressive. So it's very fast. The bass is deep and articulate and very, very punchy and very, very quick. So a very rewarding uh, bass response. Now, I don't know exactly the crossover frequency, but I'll put it down here. Um, the crossover to the CCAM, gold anodized CCAM dome tweeter, is very smooth. I could detect no issues in the crossover, and I'm, I'm going to assume it's probably in the 2000 hertz range, plus or minus a little bit, but it was it was very, very good, and I'm very sensitive to 2000 hertz, um, because that's 2000 to 4000, I think, is where that brightness, that stridency, that, you know, what gives you listening fatigue lives, and I didn't detect any of that with this speaker. Now, the Metal Dome tweeter, Again, great extension out to 36,000. I will say that as a, in its just natural form, it does exhibit a little extra high frequency energy, but I wouldn't describe it as bright. It is not Focal or BMW bright. Um, it is more, maybe not quite as bright, a little bit more restrained than maybe a Kef. So, but very nice high frequency response. That said, you need to be careful what you pair it with. So how did I pair it together? Oh, by the way, let me mention, Ported design, it uses this fluted port, which is proprietary, which Monterey claims reduces chuffing and, and port noises and things like that. Very nice, high quality binding posts. So let's get to how I use this, what I tested it with. I threw everything I had at it. I threw all that vintage gear. So I tested it on the big Pioneer. I tested it on the Ac vintage Accuphase. I tested it on the vintage Morantz. I tested it on the vintage Harman Kardon. I tested it on the NAD C700, first generation NAD C700 that I have in for, or had in for reviewer that I've reviewed. I hooked it up to the Cambridge Evo 150. I hooked it up to the Orchard Audio Star Crimson amplifier. I hooked it up to the Cambridge AXR 100. Was there anything else? Uh, I can't think of anything else. I think that was everything. So what were the pairings and how did they work out? On the vintage stuff, all the glorious vintage sound came through just beautifully, as you would expect. This is a very good kind of neutral to the source uh, speaker. Again, maybe a little extra high frequency energy, but depending on what you pair it with. So that said, the NADC 700 was a, not a good pairing at all. It was very difficult to listen to. 
not a fan of that product anyway, but I think it was just a bad combination. Um, pairing it to the uh, Evo 150 was a great combination, but with a caveat. The Evo 150 uses a Hypex N-Core amp module, which does have a little extra energy on the top end, and combined with this, it's a little much. So I had to go in and use my shit locus to kind of bring everything down a half a dB here and a half a cut there. And I talk about that in my video about EQs and how I really like them. And if you liked that video, I would hope you would like this video and give me your subscription. That would be a big help. So doing a little tweak with the locus, the Evo was great with this. It was very good. Great image, great sound stage, great bass. Evo has a great sound to begin with. Um, but again, with that caveat, just a little cut on the on the in the in the locus, just I mean literally half a dB or a dB at the most. Magic. Then I hooked them up to the Orchard Audio Star Crimson uh, Ultra DMC amp, and that is a 250 watt fully differential balanced dual mono amplifier. And because of the dual mono, the channel separation on it is amazing. The noise floor is there. I, if, I don't know that there's any noise in that amplifier. It's just so inky black there. Um, and that was an amazing combination. And I think I mentioned in the review of the Orchard Audio piece that when I hooked these up, they vanished. They disappeared. The soundstage was bigger than my room. I could close my eyes and the soundstage and the, and, the, and the image was so amazing that while I knew where the speakers were, I couldn't have pointed to a spot in space where sound was coming from. It was just not a wall of sound, but just a big natural open soundstage, laser focused center image, great definition around the uh, particular instruments. They were placed properly in space, uh, fore and aft and up and down. It was just magic. These things do image, and they imaged great on everything that I listened to them on. Um, but it was just that Orchard Audio was amazing. Um, I also have been listening to them on the AXR100 from Cambridge Audio. And I'll be honest with you, the Orchard Audio at $4,000, that's not a great, it's not going to be a common pairing with a $1,500 street price speaker. What would be more common and more price appropriate would be something like the Cambridge AXR100 or maybe the Cambridge AXA or AXA81 uh, 80, Mark II, or CXA81 Mark II, excuse me, um, which I have not reviewed and maybe I can. But anyway, I think that would be a great pairing. But the AXR100, that amplifier, that's it's my bestie. It was my daily driver for years. I still find myself listening to it all the time and I've been diving in with ease on that. That has, it's a class AB amplifier and it just has that class AB warmth and sound and kind of the, the, the power and dynamics that I, you know, Class D does a great job with that too, but there's just something about Class AB for 50 years I've been listening to Class AB. I connect with that sound really well and I connect with the Class D stuff as well, but just great bass. And that AXR100 is well known for digging deep and having a great bass, bass response, having a fast attack. It's very dynamic. And it, with these speakers, they were perfect dance partners. Bass was great. Mid bass was great. Mid range, the AXR100. 100 leans toward warm, which then tamed these down to my taste perfectly. And while the AXR has a really good extended and well-detailed treble, it is on the smooth side. So is it the last word in detail? No, but boy, it's satisfying. And image-wise, um, again, the AXR 100 is legendarily famous for having a gigantic image. And it was amazing with this. Is it the most uh, detailed as far as placement in space of individual instruments. No, they're maybe slightly out of focus, but depth is good. Not the deepest in the world, but good depth, very good center image and great width and height. Um, just beautiful. It was a great combination. I'd been listening to it for the, for the last uh, week or so, really almost all the time. And the nice thing about it was it let me get lost in the music. I was just digging into the library, going back in the archives, going into the algorithms and finding new stuff, going into the playlist you guys have sent me and discover all kinds of wonderful new stuff. It was just so, so joyous. I was able to take off my reviewer hat and not analyze and just sit and enjoy the music and tap my toe and bob my head. And that was a great combination. So hardly recommend that amp combination. I recommend that amp with a lot of uh, price appropriate uh, speakers. And I'll be doing a, a review on the AXR100. You may have seen it before this, or you may see it after it. I'm sorry, I shoot reviews out of sequence, and I don't always know when they're gonna, when they're gonna come up uh, and be uploaded. So anyway, great combination, great speaker, 
very recommended. I did find a bunch of them on eBay for sale. I also found um, the Bronze series, which people who've heard both have told me they have a very similar sonic signature. Um, so if you're in the, in, the, in the mood for a vintage monitor audio, the Silver series, the Bronze series, you know, get a good recommendation and, and get a good recommendation from other people on the internet and things like that. But I really, really enjoyed my time with these. And they were great and a lot of fun. So hopefully you liked the video. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. Um, because you guys have given me some great subscriptions and my subscriber count is growing, there was a manufacturer that was knows my channel, uh, a gentleman by the name of Thomas Tan, who sent me one of his Galleon amplifiers to review. Uh, and it's sitting over there right now. I'll talk about it later. I am got it for a bit of a, a period, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna dig deep into it before I do a review on it. Um, I have been listening to it on these, and it is very good. But again, it's because of you guys and the subscriptions that folks like Thomas see my channel, watch my channel, and feel that it's worthwhile to let me have product for review. So I'm so grateful for that, you guys. Um, please comment. Everybody who comments knows I respond to the comments. Tell me what you think of this. Tell me what you, tell me what system you listen to that get, helps you get lost in that music so that you're not listening to the system anymore. You're just enjoying the music because to me, that's the whole goal of all of this is the enjoyment of music. And thank you guys so much for sending me playlists. They're in the community post. Now, someone mentioned to me that they couldn't find the membership tab on my main YouTube page. There will be a link to the membership if you are so inclined to join up and you can join for as little as 99 cents a month. Um, and I'll put that link there. Also too, in the video, there is a thank you button. If you wanna buy me a granola bar, that would be great. Throw me a couple of bucks. Um, you can do that with the thank you button and I appreciate that. Um, also too, in the description are affiliate links, Amazon, you know the drill those. My playlists, great. You guys have been sending me playlists. That community page is post is starting to fill out with some really great playlists. So I really appreciate that. Um, so again, good recommendation here. Thank you so much, uh, my members and my subscribers. Thank you so very much. Um, it has been just so rewarding. And again, getting noticed by obviously one of the OG guys on YouTube and says he enjoys my channel and then sends me product. It's because of you guys subscribing. It really is. And and I would appreciate more subscriptions if, if those of you who are watching aren't subscribed and maybe I can get more cool stuff to review and hopefully have some fun with it. But I am so grateful and so humbled by kind of the community that we're building. I am, it's rewarding beyond words. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I really am, am so grateful. Anyway, this is Ed Home at Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. It is now time for you to go listen to some music and get lost in the music and not the system and then comment and tell me what that system was and how much you enjoyed it. Thank you so very much. I hope you have a wonderful day.